Hi everyone, today I've got another lampshade revamp for you. We're going to take this old plastic lampshade and turn it into something really beautiful. I'm Rebecca and you're watching the Classic Craft Studio channel. So to make the little circles, we're going to go around five times around the tip of our little finger. Take the embroidery, your crochet hook, sorry. <laughs> Slip it through and then just do one. I like to do two like this um, before I slip it off. Okay, it's come off by itself, but that's all right. Okay. Right, so now we get our hands into position and we just crochet around doesn't really does not matter how many stitches you do going around the circle um, just as long as there's enough to keep it all secure basically if you need to recap on how to do single crochet I've done a whole how to crochet course so I find it quite fun to incorporate crochet and sewing together into projects sometimes so um, yeah, although I'm not a crochet channel as such, I do like to mix the two techniques. So, yeah, if you need a recap, I've done a tutorial on that for you. I think it's actually the lesson one when we go through that. And then you'll also find, if you look at my previous tutorial on crochet rings, that I've done these same circles there. And then made those into some really crazy funky flowers, which are quite fun. Okay, so single crochet all around. Don't cut the string too short. I mean, it doesn't need to be excessively long, but I cut mine that long length, and then just finish them off. Okay, and then we've got our piece that we're working on. So that will be the outer edge. You can see it's got a nice sort of, almost like a coral feel to it. Um, but when we stitch it on, we stitch it on from this side. Then I use a wool needle, so that's a blunt tapestry needle, and a side, and a crochet hook, um, one and, or half size. This is a two mil crochet hook. I'm using a one and a half mil, and um, that's just sometimes the little ends are easier to tuck in with a crochet hook than a needle. Okay, and then. I'm quite simply just stitching these on. So it turns out that my lampshade is pretty much the same size as this plate, so that's why I'm using it as a guide for how many I need to add. So I will put this one over here. So it's got to be quite securely stitched, even though you're only doing a few little stitches, um, because it's going to be pulled taunt over the plastic lampshade. So, um, yeah, don't be shy to do really good strong stitches there. And then just put cream on my hands so it's a bit slimy. <laughs> around the outer edge so you may notice that there's like two different tones of yellow happening here that's just one of those things I searched for ages to get the same yellow again and I've had to just give up um, and go with what I could find which is unfortunately a shade yellow but luckily it's just around the outer edge and we're going to have the petals so I'll just bend those to cover the the discrepancy in color and I'm hoping once it's up there on the ceiling, it won't be quite as noticeable. Right. Okay, so I'm just going to fill up these gaps, and then we'll do the outer. OK, 
Okay, so this next part's completely experimental, so I'm just going to give it a go and see what, what how it works. I'm going to do chains of stitches between these points, and then I'll go back after them and do single crochet over them. Like I say, it's a complete experiment. We'll just, oopsie, sorry, it's a complete experiment. Um, yeah, so we'll just see how it works. If it doesn't, we can always undo it. So I think I'll start here in this corner here. I'm guessing this part's going to involve a lot of measuring and take quite a bit of time to get right. But, um, right there. So remembering, of course, that this is actually our front. So if we are going to be tucking things in, we're going to do it on the side that we're busy working on now. We're working on the back. And like I was saying, luckily the IKEA plate is pretty much the same size as the plastic IKEA lampshade we're trying to save, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, Yeah, I think that's working. I think it's going to work. Um, I may go afterwards and just join little spots like that, but I'm going to leave them free for now just to see how it all works out. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with that and then I'll get back to you when I've done all that. I've been going around the outside and I'm doing, I'm going to show you how I'm doing this. I'm not entirely sure this is going to work, but we're going to try. So what I'm attempting is to do netting stitch around the edge. So unfortunately it does mean that you need to count your stitches. 
I happen to have 255, which is divisible by 3. Uh, if you've got a number that's divisible by 4, then you just add one more single crochet stitch. So how I've been doing it is I... Let me just get to the chain 5, and 2, 3... So I join at any spot around, doesn't matter, and then I count one, two, and then on the third one, so you would do a slip stitch, pretend you're just starting now. Um, slip stitch into these tiny stitches, which can be tricky, but with a wiggle and shove you'll get there. So slip stitch in, or make your first chain in your inner stitch there, and then you chain five. So this is the most simplest netting stitch you can do. So you've changed, you've joined your thread, chained five, and then you count one, two, and into the third one. So like I say, if your number is divisible by four, then you'd go into the fourth one, but mine's by three. So it's one, two, and then into the third stitch. Either one loop, two loops, under both loops, whatever you can get, just as long as it's in the stitch and not underneath, because that doesn't work for this round. So put it in there, and then I just do a slip stitch to join it and then chain five, then count one, two, three, into the stitch, and make it a slip stitch. I do keep a second a much smaller hook, well, not that much, it's a 1.5 and I'm working with a 2 mil hook. Um, just to, if, because sometimes the t stitches can be quite tight, um, so it helps to get in there. Let's see, exactly like that one. One, two, and then we do the third one. Just helps to loosen the stitch. And then you can get your hook in there. Oops. <laughs> Things that only really happen when you're on camera. Alright, so you get the idea. Chain 5, attach into your third stitch. So I'm going to finish this round and then we'll start the next round. Okay, so we're in the last one of this round. Okay, so last one, we're going to join it there. Slip stitch. Right, now we're going to start our next round. So. Doing five, and then we just chain into them. And this time we're going to do a proper chain stitch, and then just keep going around, chain five, and single crochet into that one. and then I'll do my second round like that and then we'll see how it's looking. I won't really know until I've done like two or three rounds of this net stitch if this is going to work but that's what experimenting is for. Right so turn five single crochet under the next loop all the way and around. We've reached the end of round two of our netting stitch well almost there Okay, and now I'm just going to carry on. I'm probably going to do, by the looks of things, about four rounds of this. Um, so I don't want to increase any stitches, so I'm going to join those two together with a slip stitch. 
And then I'm going to start chain 5. And I'll go into that one. And we begin round 3. Chain 5, single crochet into there. Right, so round three begins, and then I'll get back to the end of round three. Right, so we are at the end of round five, almost, anyway. and I think I think that's going to be enough. So I'm going to just do my last connector here, last single crochet, and then I'll join to that. There. And I'll finish off. Right, so I'm going to have to do, I think, three more. So that's all going to tuck underneath. I'm going to have to do one, two, have some little gaps here. Definitely two more circles, three more circles in there. So that's working out nicely. You'll see once I'm done how I'm planning to do that bit. So we can start placing our petals. I'm working on the back of this maroony burgundy satin. I'm going to be drawing six petals, six of the large petals. So I use my chalk liner to do the outlines. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the um, small petals as well while I'm doing out the patterns and then we'll put the wire on. Yeah, so that's the petals all drawn on, the, small, the inner, inside petals, the outside petals, six of each. And then I'm going to be using this binding wire around the outside. So it's a 0.75, I'm oh, sorry, a 0.7 millimeter wire, so it's thin and flexible, but still strong enough to hold its to hold um, hold some structure. Right, let's get the sewing machine set up for free motion embroidery. Set your machine to a buttonhole stitch with a stitch width width of 3.5, and make sure you've got a satin stitch foot on your machine. So just check with your hand wheel to make sure that my needle is going to land nicely on either side. I'm going to reduce the size a little bit, I've got some space there. So I'm on a three and a half width now. using my needle to lean to press against and just bend the tip of that petal. Right, to get to the cutting out part. So we're going to cut as close to the stitches as we can without actually 
cutting any of the stitches. If you do cut any, it's not the end of the world because we're going to be going around it again. You just don't want to cut like a whole section and then have the wire pop out because that can make it difficult to get it back in. But for the rest, you're just cutting as close as you can to the stitches. So I'm going to cut all of these out and then we will go around the stitching again. Okay, so round two of the satin stitch on the outside. Um, it's going to take a little bit longer than the previous round because we're going to make our a, a tight, um, very tight stitch here. So I've got my stitch length on the smallest of the buttonhole. And then I'm also going to increase the width ever so slightly just to make sure that everything gets covered. Using my hand wheel to check that everything's good. Okay. So just got to let it happen. It takes a long time. So that'll be the side that's actually showing. And that's the side we're working on. Right, and do the rest of them. Right, and now a little trick to show you. So because you can see these little tufts here, it's not the end of the world because this is a lampshade, so it's gonna be you won't be looking too closely at it. However, we can fix it quite easily. You can either go over it again with another round of satin stitch. So if you're doing using this technique to do something like cosplay, you might want to look at that going around a second time. But for today, you just take a lighter because this is um, satin. It's not a cotton, so it will melt nice and easily. So you just very quickly go around the edge like that. Not too much because you don't want to burn the black thread. But um, so it just neatens that up a bit. Get rid of these little tufty bits here. Yeah, the official way to do this would be to go around a third time, and then you get a lovely thick, solid line of stitching. But like I say, that also works pretty well. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them. I thought I filmed this one, but I didn't. So, let me film this one. <laughs> it's going to be exactly the same as we did the outside petals. And that's what happens when you hit the wire. <laughs> right, let me just quickly change my needle and then we'll carry on.
Okay, so that's looking quite good. But we just need to make sure that we don't have this weird overlap thing happening. So just to get them all evenly spaced. A little tuck in each one. Yeah, so it'll be the under layer of petals. Then I'm going to put these on top. So to see without putting anything how they all go. Okay, let's get stitching. Start from here. No, it's a little tricky, and I am wearing safety glasses, especially for this part because we are stitching over many wires here, and I like to still be able to see at the end of this project. So, you guys, right, straight stitch around sure that we're not trapping the ones that we want to leave loose which is over there okay So there'll be prestids there, holding those two petals together. And we're going to put that on top. Right, so now we're going to stitch the blue petals in the same way, just around the bottom there, leaving these two open like that. So is that all good? Okay, I'm going to go and measure it on the lampshade. And then if everything's okay, we'll stitch these two pieces. So I'm back from trying it up on, well, trying it on the light shade, lamp shade. Um, it's very tight fit, so I have to spread these blue ones out as much as possible. But it will fit, so yeah, let me get on with that. Just gonna put the press dot in quickly.
that part's done. Now I've got this part, which is our middle bit. So I'm just going to tuck this in. Okay, I got the marker right. So there's little gaps where I needed extra um, circles. I just put little chains of stitches rather than the circles that I made because the circles didn't actually fit nicely. So just done little chains there and now I'm simply just weaving in and out of these gaps. And then we're going to put the lampshade together. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. See you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll be back next week with another tutorial. See you then. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.